All right, folks, it's time for a favorite podcast, Cut to the Chase. And a lot of people are out there right now who are saying to themselves, boy, what is this artificial intelligence? Do I need to know it? Do I want to know it? Is this going to eliminate my position? You know, what issues do I need to focus on and all that? So I'm scratching my head like I don't really know the answers to this question. So I figured I would go to the guy that I know knows all this stuff, Tanner Jones from Consult Webs. How are you doing today? Doing wonderful. Thank you for the opportunity to be here, Greg. Um, now, I know Tanner because I want, you know, my own marketing soup to nuts for my law firm to be top notch and it needs work. I'll be the first one to admit that. So I said, boy, I better reach out. And I know Tanner, we know each other at these conferences these mass tour conferences, you impress me. So I said, I'm going to call you. We talked and I said, you know, artificial intelligence, we see so I'm like, oh my God. So I figured, you know what? The only way I'm going to get these answers is if I bring you on here and ask you these questions myself. But first, give me a little bit. Of, I know you're vice president of business development and I know that your firm does a lot of work for law firms, mainly mm -hmm. only law firms. That's and right. Basically digital, all things digital. Why don't you give us audience a little bit before we get into the topic of artificial intelligence why don't you give the audience a little bit of what you do what consult webs does how consult webs can help law firms absolutely yeah thanks for that question we we've been around since 1999 so we're one of the longest standing legal focused web marketing companies out there in the country we take great pride in that because as you well know the internet there are a lot of fly by night companies out there. You know, anyone with a a, a computer and a strong internet connection can essentially uh, claim that they have a digital marketing agency. And so what we've done is we've really built a world class team. We have over 120 full time team members ranging in all aspects of digital. So we have licensed attorneys on staff writing content for our client websites and writing messaging for social media and other properties. We have designers, developers. We have search engine optimization professionals, public relations professionals, uh, paid advertising experts that range from local services ads to pay-per-click in Google to display ads to remarketing strategies, literally everything in between. Um, so we, we really help law firms protect their brands online and, and, and really showcase a positive reputation online. But most importantly, law firms hire consult webs to attract more cases, the right types of cases that they want to pursue through their website and through other means. So, you know, you use the, the, the phrase digital marketing. And, you know, when I have, I've sort of, I guess, grown up my law firm with the marketing that's been utilized for law firms over the years. And, mm -hmm. you know, initially it was, you know, you'd go to the Kiwanis Club, you'd meet with these organizations, then, oh my God, then what about the bus bench and the billboard and and then all of a sudden TV and I'm like my God all these things what is like give us give the audience what is digital marketing I mean I know it sounds like a you know an easy question or whatever but what what does that encompass Yeah it's it's a fair question you're right Greg it's it seems like uh, the internet is just getting more and more fragmented you're right you know like people are spending time in a lot of different places and and the reality is that. Any marketing is about getting your brand in front of the right audience at the right time. Yeah. And, and so when we refer to digital marketing, it can it can refer to a lot of different things when it comes to promoting a brand online. But in most instances today, the most effective digital marketing strategy is, is not a one trick pony, meaning it's not a, a single effort online that's going to produce or make or break your business any given year. In many aspects, digital marketing is is a comprehensive strategy in how you're representing your brand online and ultimately how you are intentionally and proactively getting your brand in front of that audience. So it is a big catch-all term. You know, you can get much more granular and in, in, in referring to like search engine optimization, where you're looking to show up in Google or other search engines. But digital marketing is just anything online. Oh, when you're putting your your brand out there online in an effort to be um, to gain exposure or to attract leads or cases, that's how we refer to digital marketing. All right. So I just presumed foolishly that artificial intelligence really wouldn't play into digital marketing, but mm -hmm. I'm wrong. And so explain how it's being utilized in the digital marketing space, artificial intelligence. You know, especially when it comes to personalization, 
segmentation. Yep. So this this is a big topic, and and it and it's it's intimidating to a lot of people, and rightfully so. I mean, you you asked, you started off this this conversation with a few uh, questions that are on the top of minds of lawyers, and one of those is, am I going to have a job? Is is there going to be a profession for a lawyer five ten years from now with AI? And I think that's a while that question really is cringe worthy to some degree, it's a legitimate question that we should all be asking ourselves. In fact, I think artificial intelligence is going to disrupt every industry out there um, from, from the, the lowest of low to the highest of high when it comes to professions. Um, I believe certain industries will, will be impacted much more significantly than others, uh, but there's no doubt there will be an impact. So let, let's talk about artificial intelligence, what it is. Um, a lot of a lot of people don't really understand the full extent of what AI uh, has, how it's been used. And, and I'll point to most social media platforms out there today is, is leveraging artificial intelligence. Um, so let me explain. You know, TikTok has been one of the biggest, fastest growing social platforms around in the last couple of years. And TikTok is really built off of artificial intelligence, uh, its ability to see how long did that user spend on that particular video, um, or did they immediately swipe up for the next video? And it's constantly training itself on who this user is and what type of content that they consume so that it can continue to deliver the right type of content at the right time. So if you're, uh, forgive me if this is too, uh, <laughs> too, too personal, but you know, a lot of people spend time in the restroom uh, on their phones and on social media. You know, there's a certain time of day people are doing that. Well, these algorithms and artificial intelligence is smart enough to know that between seven and seven thirty, you know, you're you're spending time, and so we're going to feed you this type of content which you typically yeah. like in the morning. That's artificial intelligence. In fact, one of the co-founders of Google, Larry Page. Uh, gave a quote. I'm not going to read the full quote because I don't remember it off the top of my head, but basically he implied the perfect search engine. What we're aiming toward our vision as Google is to create a search engine that leans solely on artificial intelligence and is catering to the individual user and their preferences at their time. He wrote that in, in 2006. So clearly, Google has had artificial intelligence on their minds and, and leveraging engineers pushing AI for well over a decade now. So yes. really, the, the whole concept is that this is not new to, to this industry or to any industry. The big thing is, what is it going to do? The whole concept of anything that a, a law office is doing right now that is repetitive, like task-driven, or that's crunching numbers, anything that a supercomputer can do faster, artificial intelligence is going to be the ultimate um, replacement to that time because it can also ultimately leverage the data, make sense of the data as long as you can train it that way. And now, as opposed to leaning on an individual, an executive assistant or whoever that may be, you can leverage this type of technology to, to take over that and run with it indefinitely. And it never asks for a break. It never needs holidays. It can continue to work for you. <laughs> so, I mean, I vacillate, you know, when I hear all this stuff, like exciting or yes. frightening, I'm not really sure where, you know, every moment is, it, you know, I'm thinking, wow. So, all right. So yeah. digital marketing, and let's just say I hire you guys and do a digital marketing campaign. Are you mm -hmm. telling me that artificial intelligence is going to be involved in that uh to, to some degree that? yeah yeah to some degree um and and i believe in the next two years you know fast forward two years from now artificial intelligence is going to be much more infused within our business and any other business i i'll step back a moment and speak to a very specific artificial intelligence tool that has really made uh, a lot of news lately and that's chat gpt chat gpt is essentially a um it is a natural language um, system that is built off of AI. So the, its parent company, OpenAI, is is the 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 company that established ChatGPT, and this tool was really built to uh, to write like a human, in in the most simplest way to explain it. So it's a chat a chatbot. They call it a generative chatbot, where you can essentially have a conversation with it, and it's going to return responses based on what you're asking of it. Yeah. So when it comes to that type of technology, 
that comes with a lot of excitement because content is a big part of what a marketing agency produces. We have licensed attorneys writing content. You can imagine our overhead and, and hiring lawyers to write and edit content all day, every day. Well, a tool like ChatGPT can produce a, let's say a 200 word article that may take a typical lawyer, let's say two hours to research and thoroughly vet and then write. It may take ChatGPT five seconds to produce that piece of content. Now, it's not as simple as just looking at it, you know, cut and dry like that, because it is truly apples to oranges right now in terms of a human or a licensed attorney writing content in chat GPT. And I think that may be a good place to go, Greg, um, in terms of some of its downfalls right now yeah. and things to be truly cognizant of, but it's not perfect. It's not perfect at this point. The The process of artificial intelligence, however, is that it will only get better. It's only going to get smarter. And that's what's somewhat concerning. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I do have a lot of concerns and, you know, I was kind of hoping to streamline them over the course of my life, but I don't know that that's happening. So what are the significant improvements that artificial intelligence has brought in, you know, in this field, in the digital marketing? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, right, you know, on this topic of content, writing content has been a huge time suck for most businesses uh, in order to produce quality content. Well, with the tool like ChatGPT, one thing that we're actively testing, now to be totally clear, full disclaimer for your audience, we are not recommending people just go gangbusters, churning out a lot of content using artificial intelligence right now. In fact, it can actually be harmful to your website and to your search rankings if not done appropriately. So what we're testing right now is the ability to, to key in the proper prompts because prompts are everything with this type of software. And I'll give you an example. If I just went in and said, create a personal injury page of content at 2000 words targeted toward Austin, Texas. Well, it's, it's going to do that. It's going to produce it just as I ask. But if I can train that chatbot to be much more intelligent in terms of its on-page optimization and how Google is actually reading that piece of content, making sure that I'm building in all the appropriate keywords or synonyms into that piece of content to expand its visibility and relevance. And then also I'm telling it to build in relevant citations and source citing sources. Chat, ch chat GPT with the proper prompts can produce a really good rough draft, at which point now you should run it through a set of tools there are plagiarism checkers that you can run it through because that is one area. It's rife with uh, issues of plagiarism and copyright uh, concerns. So you run it through a plagiarism checker. You can run it through an AI checker. There's actually an AI content checker, which will essentially try to uh, remove the AI fingerprint or DNA from the piece of content. Yeah, and And then it would ultimately run through a human editor to review and approve. And so it's still an extensive process, but just by going through, starting with that original rough draft, you can shave off a significant portion of time, money ex and expense over time and still create a high quality piece of content and even do so at an exponential pace compared to what we've been able to do in years past. Does that make sense? It does. It absolutely does. Now, before I get on to my next topic, which is research, which is a big thing for lawyers and how artificial intelligence plays into that. Mm -hmm. um, the first time I just a little, silly little story. The first time I even heard about chat GPT, I'm in the over 50 crowd. So, you know, we we apparently we, we're the last to know. But I was at a wedding you know, and the best man comes up, starts to give a speech. And I'm like, you know, I knew the best man. I'm like, Oh, maybe this is a good time for me to go to the bathroom, whatever. I can't imagine this is going to be exciting. And my girlfriend is like, don't you go anywhere. I'm like, all right, fine, fine. And it was like amazing. And I was like, wow. I came up to him afterwards. I'm like, how did you pull that off? It's like chat GPT. I'm like, what? Anyway, so now I kind of figured it out. Okay, so to me, research has always been something like, as an attorney, you can never, I always, there's always something more to research. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually, when I first started, I moved my office close to the courthouse because the courthouse had a really good law library. And I was doing lots of different types of cases. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't really even know what I'm doing. Better get over to the law library, whatever. So that was it. That was my thing. I just go to the law library and, and research it. Mm -hmm. And then there was LexisNexis and Westlaw. And all right, now, you know, I'm 
plugging in keywords and you know all that kind of stuff. But now this really sounds exciting. To me, this is more the exciting than the frightening part of it, mm -hmm. um, which is the research. How how has it streamlined legal research, analytics? What are the risks, drawbacks? You know, like, mm -hmm. should you go all gangbuster and not worry about it? Like, what's where are you at with that? By no means should you just go loose as if it's the wild, wild west and and using it as as, you know, biblical truth. Uh, right. It's not it's not there by any means at this point in time. The, the reality is that it's it has so much to learn. It has so much to grow in. And, and, and I'll explain kind of how this data set was created. So the whole concept of chat GPT is it's pulling off of a monster data set uh, back in September 2021. They pulled the data set from across the internet. So you can imagine all of the information, all the content, the data, everything online, this tool essentially took into inventory within its collective intelligence. And and that's when that data set stopped. And so naturally, if there are if there's case law that has evolved or changed since September 2021, well, this system is just going to either make it up. Or, or that's right. I said, make it up. And they refer to that as what they call hallucinations that, that this, this system will create. So it's yeah. essentially, if you're giving it prompts, very detailed prompts on the research, this specific case law around, you know, in this state or, or around this topic, whatever it may be, when it goes out and scours its data set and cannot, it may find 80% of the information, but it's lacking 20%. The biggest problem with it right now is it's making up. It's just glorifying that 20%, and they call that the hallucination. Yeah. And that's why, while this research tool can be fabulous and save you a bunch of time, you still need to vet the information and cross-reference to ensure it's up-to-date and it's accurate. Can I assume that at some point this time frame cutoff will be, you know, not corrected, but improved upon? No so doubt. Look back in time, and yes. I would imagine that's going to have to happen. It, it's going to happen. They're, they also actively have engineers constantly fixing bugs, um, going in, updating information as users are feeding it. But this whole concept is not like they had to start with some data set. That was the internet back in 2021. Well, as users are using it, they're feeding it. They're teaching yeah. it. It's constantly being trained and updated with more accurate information. And so, yes, it's it's only going to get better, which would imply that over the next couple of years, if you pride yourself in being one of the best legal analysts or legal researchers in the marketplace, you better believe this supercomputer is going to dance circles around you and your ability. And so that's a wake-up call, right, for, for anyone who... Uh, has has just leveraged their own strengths and their own resources or their own library. Uh, this system will most certainly overtake that. All right. So, you know, the risks involved in researching and relying on this. I mean, I'm sure there's some lawyers right now that are like, I can do demand letters, demand packages. Mm -hmm. I can research. I can write letters. Let's do it. Let's go, go, go. And, you know, they're just so excited that, you know, oh, my God, I don't want to miss out. I don't want to be the next you know, person that's that missed the boat or whatever. But are there like ethical considerations? Is there any examples that you know of where ethics sort of was, you know, kind of became an issue in in AI? I believe there are a lot of them. Yes. Um, and and I would encourage each individual attorney to make sure you're doing your own research on the ethics side as well as even consulting with ethics lawyers. I'm not a lawyer, full disclaimer, nor am I an ethics lawyer. Um, but but I have found that there are some vulnerabilities with this software, in particular chat GPT that we're talking about. Uh, a few things, one being the hallucinations that it has. Naturally, if you cannot trust it 100 percent as being accurate, you you better not be incorporating that into any kind of legal documentation or bringing that to court. You, you need to make sure you've covered uh, yourself and your client in that respect. A couple other issues. Uh, there have been reports that. Um, there have been breaches, confidentiality breaches within the system. So let's say you set up an account in ChatGPT, you're using it to, to draft demand letters, as you suggested, and maybe your paralegals have have just keyed in a lot of confidential client data in, yeah. in drafting these. Well, this system has been breached and there have been um, there's been access to the prompts entered, meaning that information has been 
exposed to the public. And that in and of itself can pre present some pretty major liability issues to a law firm. Yeah. Um, there are a few other aspects. There are no age restrictions on this software right now, uh, at least not in the U.S. And so that presents some concerns that it's very likely um, the uh, FTC is going to get involved. There's going to be governmental regulations being put in place with this software. In fact, um, you have some pretty major influencers in the tech business, Elon Musk being very vocal about this software. He was actually one of the innovators behind it originally, yeah. and he sold off his share. And now Microsoft has purchased ChatGPT. And so naturally, Bill Gates is a huge advocate of the software. Um, Elon Musk is out there telling the government to put a pause on this for for the safety and the well-being of civilization and humanity until we can actually get caught up on this. Um, whereas Bill Gates is saying, let's keep going full speed with it because the software is in his hands, naturally. Yeah. Uh, but he's also saying, let's keep it in the good guy's hands because you're not, even if you put regulations in place, it's not going to keep it out of the bad guy's hands. So it's a really interesting national debate around this. Whereas even Italy was the first country in the West to actually ban ChatGPT this year for its citizens. Is ChatGPT the only avenue to utilize? So for someone like me to like get involved in the artificial intelligence and starting to draft a man letters or research, or are there other, I don't know, are there platforms? I don't even know really the terminology. It It is, so that it is the best out there. Uh, Google rushed to the market after after Microsoft purchased ChatGPT. Google rushed to the market and released what they call BARD. Uh, and that is essentially their, their competitor. Um, but it is nowhere near where ChatGPT is right now. So ChatGPT has quickly earned itself as the dominant force when it comes to this technology right now. Uh, Google will continue to invest in artificial intelligence and generative AI and uh, chatbots and such. In fact, they're going to be releasing what they call Magi, which is a whole new algorithm, essentially a whole new search engine uh, that, that's going to be behind Google, it's expected to come out at the end of this year, 2023, which is going to be much more of a personalized user experience leveraging artificial intelligence. We're going to continue to see this technology literally in everything that we use or everything that we do in all aspects of our lives and businesses. All right. So what do you think the future of AI in the legal industry is going to look like? We're talking legal documentation, automation, AI powered legal services. Where mm -hmm. do you see, give me like your horizon? I mean, can you, can you give me more than a two year horizon, a five year? A, mm -hmm. I mean, are we, Greg, it gets so tough. I mean, it, you know, I mean, your your guess is as good as mine. I think any anybody predicting where we're going to be two years or longer from today, it is a wild guess. Uh, and and that's really that should speak to how quickly this technology is going to advance. And that's the scary part is that it, it is like once it starts to be leveraged, it's going to self learn. It's going to continue to get better and better. And without a doubt, it will work people out of jobs. There is no question in my mind, uh, especially, I mean, your, your, um, your task driven, um, you know, deliverable type driven work, uh, executive assistants, writers, editors, those types of professions are going to evolve dramatically. So when it comes to the legal profession, um, I've heard it said that transactional lawyers, you know, that that is likely one of the first areas within the legal vertical that are, that's going to be totally transformed. Yeah. Um, what I would encourage for any law firm, it doesn't matter which practice area vertical you're in, really be challenging yourself within your office. Look at your overhead, look at your expenses. Where's the bulk of those expenses going every single month and who's it going to what personnel and really being intentional about identifying, like looking through their job descriptions, their weekly task lists, and challenging individual people within the office, what of this stuff that you're doing every single week can be leveraged through this latest technology? Because what I've challenged every lawyer I've come into contact with is if you're not using it, you're not embracing it. 
and, and even if you're you're failing forward and testing it and not really knowing how to use it in the business, well, without even doing that, you're you're limiting your thinking, you're limiting your ability to actually start to leverage this technology. And and if you think about the law firms back in the let's say the the late '90s, Greg, you may have been one of them. Uh, those that are investing in Yellow Pages, you know, back in the day, Yellow Pages, the double truck ads, that was that was King Kong, that was everything. If you could just get there, yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, your marketing's on autopilot. The the phone is ringing. Those that were so stuck in that era when the internet came around. It was 10 plus years. I was still talking to some of these yellow page lawyers saying the internet is most certainly making an impact on firms caseloads. And and there were firms just digging their heels in the ground, not wanting to change and evolve. Yeah. And you look back today and turn around and look towards the yellow pages days. And it's like, there's no question those dinosaur lawyers likely had to close up shop because they didn't evolve with the time and with the technology and and I would tell you today with ChatGPT, it is a thousand times more impactful than when we were back in the Yellow Pages transition to internet days. Yeah, I mean, you know, I used to remember every year getting a telephone book and, you know, going back and, uh, you know, when I was first marketing as a lawyer, I would look at the Yellow Pages mm -hmm. to see who had the biggest ads and, you know, wonder how much are they paying for that? you know, that space or, or that, you know, that real estate. And I mean, the reality is with lawyers, a lot of us, it's like in our, in our DNA, just stick with what you know, you know, technology is verboten, mm -hmm. you know, just don't get in trouble by expanding or going beyond, you know, your, you know, your four corners or whatever, but that's yeah. not that. I mean, so, you know, when we talk about AI, I mean, Oh my God, technology, I mean, back, Technology was like, hey, I got a fax machine. How cool is that? That's my technology. Oh, That's great. Right. You know, so what do you think out of all this stuff with the AI? What are the implications for the develop for this development for the legal profession and the clients? The clients mm -hmm. that I would imagine there's going to be some implication to the client relations as well. No doubt. You know, the 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 biggest thing, especially coupled with a you know a looming recession within our economy. The biggest thing that's going to to dig any business owner out right now, I believe, is a focus and a doubling down on customer service, serving the client. And, and I don't mean to be cliche in that because I, I do believe that is everything. Uh, serving the client, that is the, one of the biggest differentiators you can offer in your marketplace is actually just delivering a really good service and providing a killer experience. Now, the question then is how you couple AI and this type of technology with the concept of how do we serve our clients? And, and I share that because there are a million different ways that you can do that. And, and I'm not going to try to you know list all these practical ways. I encourage the individual lawyer to think, how can we continue to embrace this technology and increase our ability to serve the client? More touches, more communication. I mean, clearly people are walking around with phones in their hands everywhere they go. So if you don't have an automated process to be texting your, your clients, giving case status updates, there are great technology sources out there available to be able to handle this and, and automate the majority of it and significantly lift your customer experience for your clients. To me, Greg, that, that's where firms should be looking at. You know, It's not a matter of people are still going to need lawyers. They're going to need lawyers. That's the reality of it. The question is, how are they going to go find lawyers tomorrow? And, and Google obviously continues to be the dominant force in being that go-to for people when they look for lawyers or any other local business. And so that to that point, I would encourage lawyers to be intentional about being where their prospective clients are, you know, attracting business and then serving them extraordinarily well. Very basic principles but tried and true principles that have allowed businesses to thrive for years and years and years, despite changes in technology. Yeah. And I know that I've heard of lots of people who, you know, are clients or were clients of law firms. And there's, there's, there's a lot of complaints about customer relations and, you know, not knowing what's going on, not understanding, you know, their case is getting settled They're you know, their, their lawyers cramming it down their throat, take this, you know, you, and, you know, so I'm hoping at some level, I think, I don't think that that's a, a good thing for the legal industry. 
Um, and I hope that maybe the artificial intelligence can help produce better client relations where they can easily access their information. And, you know, even if they need to look at something three or four times to understand it, you know, because nobody wants to explain something three times, mm -hmm. right? It's just, it's just hard to process, you know, especially when you're in a busy world and you're trying to, you know, That's right. one step ahead of everybody else, you know, so maybe that'll be a, one benefit um, to the clients. And I think, you know, we always talk about the lawyers, the law firms, the lawyers, the law firms. Well, you know, there's always the, the without the clients, there's no lawyer. So, That's it. right. You know, so listen, Tanner, I thank you tremendously for coming on to this program. If so, all right, lawyers, I know you don't want to market. You think you can get away without marketing. You're afraid of marketing. All right. But don't be, you're going to call up Tanner. You're good. He's going to help you look at what you're doing and you know what? You got to, you got to go to where that puck, I know you always say that you got to go not to where the puck is going, not where it is right now. Mm -hmm. And we all know that the puck is going in the Florida Panthers favor, but for, for <laughs> lawyers out there that are going to take my advice. And I know you don't, you hate think, Oh my God, I don't want to take this guy's advice. Take my advice. How do they get in contact with you, Tanner? Best yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. Visit consultwebs.com consultwebs.com or just search for us in Google. Check us out there. Um, I think a, what a lot of lawyers do to find value and in, in at least engaging with consultwebs is just the concept of our consultative approach. If you're just curious to know where, where you stand in the marketplace alongside your competitors, where are they at above you, below you? What are they doing better? What are you doing better? If if some of those things are interesting to you, that's that's exactly what we would provide you in that initial discussion. So certainly reach out to us, visit us at our website and give us a call. Make sure you mention Greg too, um, uh, so that we know, <laughs> we, we know you found us through that, but we appreciate it, Greg. Thank you so much. Love this topic. And maybe in a couple of years or even less than that, we can hold another one and give an update. On I would love at. to do that. Uh, we're going to do it more than uh, a couple of years from now. All right. Yeah. Have a good day. And that'll do it for this episode of Cut to the Chase. Subscribe, rate, review. If you have questions, even on this topic, you know, you could send me the questions or you can call Tanner. Either way, you know, we will try to get you answers. So that'll do it, folks.